I wanted to know how long it had taken a normal person to beat Melania without summons. The sample size for this study was 1, and the answer was 11 hours. Melania Blade of Mikola is a Japanese businesswoman with a terminal illness and prosthetic limbs, each one more prosthetic than the last. She's widely considered the hardest boss in Elden Ring, if not the entire Sears catalogue. Most players spend hours beating her while armed to the teeth with game easening mechanics. These mechanics include bleeding, stunning, and summoning. Killing her without any of these things is hard, but not impossible. Several people have recorded themselves doing it, but usually, those aren't people. Those are streamers. The more interesting question is, can your average slave to capital do it? And if so, how? Let's find out. My first hour of attempts were characterised primarily by a lack of being good. The boss has two primary challenges to overcome, high speed and life-stealing attacks. The speed can be compensated for with practice, but the lifesteal is hard to beat without parrying. Most bosses can be brute forced with a powerful summoned creature and or hefty weapon but this single mechanic kills that strategy. You need a way to mitigate not just the damage, but the attack itself, and that can only be accomplished with well-timed dodges and parries. It takes three successful parries before Melania can suffer a riposte, which is French for powerful counter-attack. Unfortunately, Melania is skeptical of your Eurocentric worldview, which is why you have to die. Parrying can be quite painful, even with a good shield. The shield I'd been using throughout the game had a lengthy parry window, which meant there were more frames in which I could successfully deflect attacks during the parry animation. This made learning more forgiving, but still challenging. Some attacks were clearly designed to be dodged rather than parried, such as the kick and the, and the grab. Attempting to parry either of those attacks was almost certain death. The kick drains all your stamina when you try to parry or block it, leaving you with none left to dodge or parry subsequent attacks, and getting hit by the grab means surprise bowel surgery. By hour two, I had some familiarity with her capabilities. Strong, intelligent, and driven to break the glass ceiling in the world of business. But most importantly, there were clearly some attacks that were more common than others. So I prioritized learning those and accepted death for the others. My theory was, if I can lock down the common attacks, I can stay alive long enough to learn the others. Anecdotal evidence suggests that the two sideswipe attacks were most common, and the parry window is very forgiving. The parry timing on the little twirl attack was clearly throwing me off, but I didn't yet have the brain capacity to consciously test the upper and lower bounds of potential timings. By hour three, I'd adapted my strategy more to what was working and what wasn't. I was clearly getting wrecked by more immediate threats, such as gliding across the room like popular children's cartoon Casper the Unaccommodating Host. This attack is known as the Waterfowl Dance, because you flail like a drowning chicken trying to avoid it. So I decided to upgrade a Misery Cord to plus 25, and put the Bloodhound Step Art of War on it. Bloodhound Step allows you to teleport short distances, which is perfect against the Waterfowl Dance. I clearly needed to practice a bit more with it, but I felt I was on the right track. Doing more damage and occasionally surviving a Waterfowl Dance allowed me to get further into the fight and gain more exposure to the moves. But I wasn't quite good enough, and eventually had to call it quits for the night. The following evening, I spent the next few hours trying to master some of the more difficult attacks. Melania's career seemed to be going well, but she was clearly spending a lot of time at the office. In Japanese work culture, it isn't uncommon for employees to only leave the office after the boss does. This makes it all the more unfortunate that her boss is a tree. And if the tree's her boss, and she's my boss, it's going to be a long night. One thing that may not be apparent as a viewer is her aggressive attitude to drinking. Being a Japanese businesswoman, she often has to drink copious amounts after work with co-workers, so reacts violently to you doing it during business hours. The safest times to drink were after a repost, but you could occasionally get a cheeky swig in when just outside of sword range. By Wednesday night, I'd found a movement pattern to somewhat avoid the waterfowl dance. I wasn't all that FP efficient, as I'd usually do a few redundant bloodhound steps. The most important thing was remaining alive, this was also the first time I seriously contended with some of Melania's new Phase 2 attacks. If you're at a reasonable distance from her once she arises from her rot flower, she'll dive at you with a wide sweep, followed by a lunge. This was fortunately rarely an issue. The most devastating Phase 2 attack 
has to be the butterfly phantoms she summons. It's an incredibly intricate pattern of attacks, each of which deals serious damage. The final lunge where she comes down from the air is almost certain death if hit. Bloodhound's step does overtime on this attack, but even with this incredibly powerful ability, it still requires a bit of timing to stay out of harm's way. By Thursday night, I'd committed many of the attacks to muscle memory, so I started properly trying to time the twirl parry. Every time I'd try to parry it, my brain wouldn't comprehend why it wasn't successful, as it visually looked as though it should have worked. When I eventually managed to delay the parry to the point my brain was screaming, you've just been hit, loser, it worked. Slowly but surely, I started repeating this timing, and got good at it. I feel like I'm almost there, but decide to call it a night. As you can tell by the way that I am, I had no plans Friday night, so it was time for some more millennia. Coming in fresh, I could notice everything I'd learned seeping in. I was ready for most of the quick strikes. I was parrying the twirl. I was breakdancing through the waterfowl dance. But I still wasn't good enough. I was tired. It was the end of another long week, and I'd spent every evening since Sunday night trying to beat up a woman with multiple disabilities and COVID-19. There was no winning here from a PR perspective. I found myself getting caught by attacks I'd seen countless times. I was getting grabbed and stabbed over and over again. I was ready to put my little butter knife down. I was ready to hang up my big dumb hat. But it dawned on me, right there in that dank, dark, diseased hovel. It was a lesson taught to me by Melania herself. You don't go home until the boss does. So I reloaded my dagger and clocked back in.
and I didn't get hit a single time. Dear Mikola. Oh, dearest Mikola. My brother. I'm sorry. I finally met. So there you have it. A regular person can indeed beat Melania without summons in a little under 11 hours. Stepping back, that's pretty nuts. That's it. Thanks for watching.